All right, so we'll get a little lesson on, on David and Saul today. And probably not that hard to realize that David could represent living by the Spirit and Saul could represent living by our flesh. It's not a perfect analogy because David certainly made a lot of mistakes and Saul did some good things in his life. So it's not 100%. And I'll try to tie that in as well. But the thing is that every one of us, no matter where we live in the world, every human being every day is faced with choices. And the Bible is really clear about who do you want to be, David or Saul? There's only one person in the Bible that says he's a man after my own heart, and it wasn't Saul. So I'm trying to give an easy answer here. Who was it? <laughs> yeah. So even though he was flawed, he was a man after God's own heart. And he's in the lineage of Jesus. They said in order for the Messiah to be legitimate, he's got to be in the line of Judah, in the line of David. Like, what a thing to say about somebody, right? So we know David was highly esteemed, even though he was highly flawed. So we're not saying that's okay, the sins that he had, but we are saying there's a goal every day when I wake up, I have to decide who am I going to serve. Anybody remember when Bob Dylan got saved and he wrote that song, you're going to have to serve somebody? It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to serve somebody. That's what he said, remember? It's such a shame that he got pulled back by the world because he wrote some beautiful Christian song. And that's, uh, I find, my personal life, the, the way the temptations come in is my flesh is tempting me to take shortcuts. And it looks like such an easy solution. And why bother praying about this? Because God, I already know God's will on this, and it's easy. I don't have to pray. That's a big mistake. And being married to my wife has really, really helped me to, to, to shift and, and to think about what does the Lord say about this? What, uh, what does the word say? Now, that might sound obvious, but when you're good at something, like in the professional world, you think, well, I already got this. I don't have to bother him with that one. Not true, okay? Every, everything matters to him, big and small. He takes them all, any prayer request. So there's this tension of who are we serving? And I want it to be the spirit. And that's clearly spelled out in Scripture that, you have two choices. You can either walk by the spirit or you can walk by the flesh. You can be David seeking after God's own heart, or you could be Saul who, you know, unfortunately just kept relying on his own logic and his own good ideas. And he was very impatient in the course of his life. So this says that Saul, even though for 40 days, Goliath was coming out and yelling and tempting and harassing Israel's army, David went down there to deliver food for his brothers. And he stepped into this scene. It's like, what's wrong with this picture? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's challenging the armies of God? And they were all too afraid to go fight Goliath. And David said, you know, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. And Saul said, okay, so the first thing I'll do is give you my armor. And how many know if you haven't tested armor, it could hurt you more than it could help you, right? So David said, you know what? I'm trying this armor on, Saul, but that's your armor, not mine. I'm an expert on the slingshot. Anybody heard the 10,000 hours expression in the business world? Yeah, there was a book that was written. And it says, in order to be an expert at something, you have to have 10,000 hours of experience. Now, the Holy Spirit can make a big difference on that. Because on the day of Pentecost, they were expert speakers of another language. They hadn't even spent one minute learning it. So God could fill in the gaps. But the point is, like... David knew that slingshot so well from all those years on the backside of those mountains. It's a little boring, I think, being a shepherd. So he was probably taking a lot of target practice. And then we know he also killed a lion and a bear, and the slingshot might have had something to do with that too, right? So if you're about to go do something no one else wants to do, you can't take somebody else's armor. you got to walk in who you are. But if he didn't know who he are, <laughs> if he didn't know who he was... Then he would have thought, well, it's the king's armor, and since I don't think very much of myself, then I might as well take his armor. And we do this all the time, and it's really not a good idea. You have to be comfortable to walk in who God made you to be. You can't be jealous of what other people are doing. You can admire other people. You can aspire to do certain things that they do. It's good to live a disciplined life. You know, there's a guy on the internet now who's getting kind of famous, his name is Jocko Willing. Anybody ever heard of him? He was a Navy SEAL. And he takes a picture of his watch every morning at 4.30, and he posts it on the internet. Because he wants everybody to know he got up again at 4.30, and he's about to go to the gym and work out. And guys all over the world are like, if he can do it, I can do it. 
So it's inspiring, right? Because he's, his line, which is pretty good, is very biblical, <clears throat> discipline is freedom. That's not what the enemy's telling you. But Navy SEALs, man, they realize in order to stay alive, I've got to stay really disciplined. So discipline about the Lord is also freedom. You wake up in the morning, you start your day in the Word, and you start maybe, you know what, I'll just donate the communion cup, and you could try it. Take this home with you. And tomorrow morning, before you eat breakfast and before you drink your coffee, have communion. Start your day on your knees. First thing, get on your knees and say, I'm giving this day over to you, Lord. The bread, obviously, you break it and you say, this is my flesh. It's, you know, it's flawed. The heart of man is deceitfully wicked. Yes, I'm a Christian, but that tempter, the Saul spirit, is just always right there. It says in Genesis, crouching at the door. Sin is desiring to have me. So if I'm not intentional about making the choice to follow the Lord every day, then I'm lacking discipline. And in those weak areas, he's going to come in. And look, David was a man after God's own heart, and the devil still came in through a besetting sin in his life. Clearly, he had a problem with his sexual appetite, and it never got resolved. So we're going to try to talk about some of these things today. But before I do, let's just think about a little history of, of uh, what, we, what we read about. I, I summarized it when I put the post up on the web and said, uh, uh, October 31st, right? You all lived through that Halloween this past week, is a day when people in America put on masks as Christians, and then in quotes, right, Romans 8, 1, there is therefore, no, therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, right? So in, in quotes it says, as Christians in Christ, we can stop hiding. So you don't have to wear a mask. And, you know, Halloween is all about masks and all about hiding. We don't have to hide. But even as Cheryl was saying it, exactly not knowing anything what I was going to share about today, she's like, I had such a hard time believing God loved me. But then there was this balloon over my head, and it was like he popped the balloon, and all of a sudden it came rushing down on me. And I recognized that he really did for who I am, even though uh, she said jacked up. <laughs> Sometimes I could be jacked up and all messed up, and he still loves me anyway. So it's not because we earn it, because we're perfect in our behavior. He doesn't want us to be messing up either, but he's saying, I'm for you. I am for you, not against you. You're my ally. I'm not your adversary waiting to punish you when you make a mistake. But Saul never caught that. I mean, we know David caught it because he wrote Psalm 51, which is a great psalm of repentance after he sinned with Bathsheba. But what about us? If there's still stronghold areas in our lives, it could very readily be that we're not seeing God as a loving father. And, and David didn't see God as a loving father in that particular area for reasons we might not have thought about, but we'll talk, talk about today. So anyway, the rest of it says we can stop hiding. David killed Goliath with his sling, but only after he took off Saul's armor. That's my message. Like, look for it in your life. Where am I standing on a counterfeit structure and looking at my identity in the wrong way? I can't see my identity as what I do. It has to be who I am in Christ. What you do is going to change. Hopefully it will change and you'll keep growing, right? And you'll, you'll put yourself out of a job in whatever job you're in because you got a promotion. That's a beautiful thing. God wants to promote us all the time. But if our whole identity is tied up in what I do, then I've got to be like uh, that Bugs Bunny commercial. Remember Donald Duck inside the oyster? It's mine. It's mine. Some people are nodding. So this I'm really dating myself. But I really like... 50 years ago, 60 years ago. I don't know what it was. But like it was one of those cartoons that everybody seems to always remember. But your, your identity is his identity. Yeah, what he thinks about you is what matters the most. The world will keep trying to put Saul's armor on you to do it their way. And a lot of times it will look appealing and attractive. Because shortcuts tend to look attractive. They're less work. It's not easy for Jocko Willing to get up at 4.30 every morning. But discipline is freedom. See it? Okay. 